for the sake of power. You don't live for these things. You eat to live, you don't live to eat. So the Muslim reminds themselves of this and takes control of their nafs and overcoming this physical need for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this struggle, it increases your taqwa. It increases your piety and your righteousness and your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as we mentioned, be careful not to be a Ramadan warrior. And lastly, great events, they need planning. Like a, like a military strategy, yeah? any operation, they will put a plan. So too, you have to have your plan for Ramadan. You can call it Operation Valuable Time. Because some people, how will they spend their Ramadan? Ramadan becomes about grocery shopping, about Hari Raya, yeah? Eid shopping for gifts and clothes and this one. If anybody has vacation time, especially for employees, you find they take it after Eid. Ajib after eight, would have been better for you to take it before eight. You are given one week or two weeks only of vacation per year, use part of it, use most of it in Ramadan. In the last 10 days of Ramadan, this would be the best way to use it. And this is what we mentioned, the righteous people, Sha'ban comes, they close their business. They said we will open after eight. And they will take their vacation for the whole year during Ramadan, yeah? Rather than saying, how can I waste it on a vacation going to some island, where I will commit sins and do haram things and so on. Rather, they would love to invest it and use it in a better way. Now, what are the ways that we can practically prepare for Ramadan? I'll give you a quick list. Number one, sincere repentance. Before Ramadan starts, you hope to catch Ramadan and benefit from Ramadan. The, the, the poet, he said, Rajab came and you kept on sinning. Sha'ban came and you didn't even stop. And now Ramadan is here and you think you will be able to? It's too late. So the person before Ramadan comes needs to try to begin the change so Ramadan can be uh, taken advantage of and maximized. One of the greatest ayahs talking about dua. It comes in Surah Al-Baqarah right between verses talking about Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu if my slaves ask about me, now usually when people would ask the Prophet ﷺ a question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will answer saying what? قُلْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ yeah? Say, O Muhammad ﷺ, to the people, Allah is the only one. But here when Allah answers, He doesn't tell the Prophet ﷺ say, He answers directly to show how close He is. He says, if my servants ask about me, I'm near, I'm close to them. I answer the call, of the one who calls on me, when he calls on me, so let him answer my call. لي, let them answer my call. What's the call of Allah? To believe in Him and to do good deeds. So if we uh, uh, want to really take advantage of Ramadan, Ramadan is a month of dua. Start making dua from now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses your Ramadan and allows you to Catch all of it and Laylatul Qadr. Number three, celebrating and rejoicing the approach of the month. Look at those kuffar, how they celebrate their holidays. Yeah? And a lot of us, we go and we celebrate with them. Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, Birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Garbage Day, days and days and days. They have no meaning in the eyes of Allah. Yeah? So how about when our special season comes, we're not happy about it? We're not excited, nothing changes in our life. For most of us, it will just come and go. The only thing we did in Ramadan, we, we, we switched our sleeping schedule. We said, I will sleep all day and stay up all night. Why? Because I can eat at night and I can't eat in the day. So what's the point there? That's the goal. So you did not change a single thing, only you changed your sleep schedule for one month, Haji. Number four, get rid of the duties that you need to do before Ramadan comes. Anything that's going to get you busy, finish it early. So in Ramadan, you can take full advantage of your time. Number five, seek some knowledge about Ramadan. What are the rules of fasting, the basics? Read about the virtues of Ramadan. Remind yourself like this kind of talk, but there's much more that we didn't mention. And you can do this together. If you are not with your family, then your brothers that you are living with are like your family, inshallah. Spend the time reminding each other, encouraging each other before Ramadan comes. Number six, Hasten to complete any task that will distract you 
from doing acts of worship. We mentioned this one. Sit with your family or your friends and encourage one another as we said and educate one another. Bring some of those kind of books and pamphlets and things that you can use for da'wah. Do fasting during the month of Sha'ban, the Prophet ﷺ never fasted any full month other than the month of Ramadan, but the month he would fast most in was Sha'ban. Yeah, he would fast the most in the month of Sha'ban. The three days, the white days, what are the white days? Ayyam al Bild. what are the white days? 13, 14, 15. Those are the days when the moon is full. Yeah, and these days it's sunnah to fast them every month. Those are the middle of the Hijri month. So for the month of Sha'ban, which we are in right now, what day is that gonna start on? Inshallah, anyone knows? Huh? It will start on, if you don't know, it's not a good sign. It means they're not counting down the days. Yeah, in my house, my young daughters, they have a chart. They are counting down the days of Ramadan, how many days left. So uh, this Thursday, inshallah, will be the 13th of Sha'ban. So if you want to fast, you can fast Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the month of Sha'ban. So that's the middle days. And subhanAllah, there's a direct correlation between the full moon and the human being's blood pressure. And that's why these days are very, very good for your health to fast every year. Now if you fast these three days of every month, Allah multiplies good deeds by how much? By how much? By? Minimum, how much does Allah multiply your good deeds? By 10 times, you should know this, this is ABCs of Islam. Every good deed you do, Allah multiplies it minimum 10 times. Some things like fasting and being patient, Allah may reward for them with no, no numbers to describe. The reward will be too much, yeah? But fasting, inshallah, will get you a minimum of 10 times. So these three days you fasted, it's like you fasted how many days? 30 days, it's like you fasted the whole month. So whoever fasts three days every month, the whole year, it's like you fasted in reward every single day of the entire year. See how generous Allah is? SubhanAllah, yeah? Now, uh, fasting the month of Sha'ban is the uh, other one, and the last one would be reciting Quran, trying to get yourself on a schedule. If you put a schedule, yeah? Now some people I know, even young children that I've taught before, they make khatim of Qur'an three, four times in the month of Ramadan. Yeah? My father personally will read it once a week. And he's an old man, but he will put his time. So how can you do that? If you read at least five pages after every salah, depending how fast you read, it may take you 10 or 15 minutes to read it, then you can make khatim of the Qur'an more than once in the Qur'an, more than once in the month of Ramadan. Yeah? Try to set a number of pages you will read, two, three, four, five pages after every salah, and you will find yourself going through the juice quite quickly. But it needs some commitment. If you've never done it before, and in Ramadan you try to start, most likely you will fail. But if you start from now, inshallah it can help you to get into the proper cycle. Now what you all need to do as a group in this condominium, you need to also think about how to make da'wah during this month. Yeah. So how can you do, for example, an iftar on campus or an iftar here in the condominium and invite some of the non-Muslims? Tell them, come, this is our month. And during that iftar, have somebody give a talk for 10 minutes. What is Ramadan? Why do we fast? We are Muslims. What's the goal? What's the purpose in life? Remind the people and make some da'wah to them. Share food with them. This is a chance. Have some brochures, some booklets about Islam, about Ramadan. Give it out for the people who will come, even those who are non-Muslim. Or reach out to the Muslims who are not practicing Islam, who are very far away from Islam. Encourage them to come. Let them feel welcome to come to the masjid, to come to your iftar, as if you are doing any iftar together as students. Yeah? Uh, giving out cards at the beginning of Ramadan, or the Eid time, to congratulate people, to welcome them. Even those who are non-Muslim, letting them know in that one, making it like a, a da'wah brochure. So be creative and see what you can do to take advantage of this month to be benefit for you and for your brothers and sisters in Islam and for also your neighbors and your colleagues who are non-Muslim. Jazakumullah khairan. I end with that. Uh, I think we're out of time, huh? Yeah. We take any questions or not? Anyone has any questions? Are there any comments or questions or corrections?
is general information. I think everybody's familiar with it, alhamdulillah. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashadu wa ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. Walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.